My name is Keith Dizek, and this is my 1979 Triumph Spitfire. We changed out the engine and transmission to a higher horsepower engine and an overdrive transmission. The engine actually being a byproduct of the transmission, because I figured if we added an extra gear, we might need a little more horsepower to push it down the road. It had been sitting for who knows how long, and I had no idea if it was going to run. That's why I bought it for $400. But uh, I got it to run, and I've been driving on that engine and transmission without taking it apart or any real major work to the internals of the engine since then. So it had been running its stock 45 horsepower and uh, four-speed transmission and leaking oil all over the place because it's British. Dave and I were going down to North Carolina to do Tale of the Dragon, but also to do the Blue Ridge Parkway. Well, we had a couple problems with this car. The first was we were driving down the Blue Ridge Parkway and all of a sudden he ran out of gas, which wasn't the first time, by the way. The first it, that had happened before just because his old carburetor sucked so much gas. It's the carburetor. best thing you can do for any English car right here. Yeah. No, it's not. Shut up, Dave. Dave are factory. hates this Shut up, carburetor. Dave. He gave it to me. He hates it so much. Yeah. Yeah. People, He's just like, here, take this piece of shit. People who don't understand that. That is what she said. Like All right. Yeah. Yes, and he didn't have a working gauge. It was hard to keep track of that. We picked this really nice scenic overlook to run out of gas at. While we waited the hour return and return trip for my uncle to come back with a jerry can, we actually just spent the whole time taking photos. I got this really nice picture of this car like coming down the freeway because he had enough gas in his jerry can to do some running shots. So we had a lot of fun with that, took pictures of both our cars, watched the sunset. That was a great time and we thought that would be the end of it. And then as it turns out, the next day when we went to go do the Tale of the Dragon, we again pulled out this really nice scenic overlook. It was over a lake with a dam on it. It was really nice and we took our pictures and said, okay, let's go do the tail. And this car was just cranking and cranking and cranking and wouldn't start. And the nice was, well, you know what? I bet it's the distributor. I, I have a spare, let's try it. And we ended up taking my, my spare distributor out of, out of the boot of mine, put it in there, did an on the fly timing. Like we just rolled the car in gear till we got top dead center. I just set it to that and sure enough, it fired up and we're like, this is great. And Keith just did a couple other adjustments to it and we were off and we were able to do the tail of the dragon and that distributor stayed in there I think until the swap. The reason we wanted to do this uh, especially here and in one day is uh, we've all watched garage shows growing up or even now I haven't quite grown up yet and uh, you know Roadkill, Mighty Car Mods, all those ones you know they they seem to throw everything together and it just seems to work you know the magic of cameras. Proper English motor here. I am thought ahead. They knew you'd be accessing it. Yeah. So I think, as Keith stated, we grew up watching this stuff on TV. You know, you watch these people fabricating stuff and they're welding stuff together like they're gluing it together with hot glue gun. Like, oh, yeah, it looks easy, it's cool. You grow up and you start learning it, and then you meet people like this who are into it too. So it's like, well, you have this task that you need to have done. You're gonna do this engine swap. We know you're gonna do it. Why don't we all do it? They're crazy enough, they like to drive a lot. So if I say, hey, Keith, bring your car over here and let's do this in my garage, I bet he's gonna do it. He did it. <laughs> I can't remember when I got the idea or what brought it up, but I knew he was gonna be doing the engine swap soon. I knew his engine was done. I knew he had his transmission and we were talking about it, I think. Why don't you just bring it over here and we'll just do it in a day because uh, it was right around the same time Dave had put a new engine in the Shaguar. And the entire day he was texting us pictures throughout quarantine. We're still working and they're not. And he was sitting there uh, wrenching the Shaguar all day. And next thing you know, two hours later, there's a new engine in it. I'm thinking, oh, well, we three guys, three or four guys, we could do that in no time. So why don't you bring your bring your car over here and we'll we'll do an engine swap in a day. And then we'll go somewhere, we'll road trip it, just like Roadkill. And they did. What I remember the most was, it was just all a giant blur. I 
Ended up spending most of the day behind the dash wiring the overdrive up because I knew I could do that and I was kind of just letting those guys do their thing up front. So there was like, I'd, I'd say what was most memorable was there was a good hour or two, it seems like, where I just was behind the dash, kind of not paying attention to what was going on. And they were like, okay, we're ready to go. And I said, I'm ready to go. And we took it out. And after all that sweat and everything, we probably spent, I don't know, about a half hour, 45 minutes trying to turn it over and it just wouldn't start. And I think, we may have had differing opinions on why and I said it was 180 out and I forget what exactly it was but I think when we finally got the thing starting and it roared to life was the most memorable part it was just all that came together and we felt like we'd actually succeeded hey look at that it fires right up Um, we were planning on bringing the car out here. I was trailering the car, and uh, we were going to pull it in, do the whole drive train swap, and then drive the car to originally South Haven. Um, it was our plan just to get it on the road and just to prove that we could do it, you know? Just to just to put ourselves like, yeah, we're, we're a garage show now. And uh, what actually happened was uh, pure roadkill. Uh, we see now that they don't, they don't script stuff. You know, they break down on the side of the highway. They're like, oh, this is so terrible. Oh, we got to fix this. And it's like, ah, yeah, they probably set that up. No, they didn't set that up. Uh, point being, my engine didn't, didn't turn out so good after we tried to fire it up. Nope. What happened was, I had gotten lazy and hadn't pulled the thermostat out of the filler neck. So the engine did not get filled with coolant. So the engine got hot, but it never registered on the gauge because the gauge is in the coolant. And by the time the coolant actually reached the engine, it was so hot that it boiled it immediately and it warped the head. It lost all compression and I had to take the head off and resurface it and put a new gasket on it. And that's why it's actually running today. But on the day that we did it, it superheated, melted down, and there was no way that was going to, to finish. That, that broke me. I, I was this close to just pushing the car into the weeds and lighting it on fire. It was, it was bad. I still feel kind of bad about it, to be perfectly honest, because the thought had crossed my mind. Keith and Joe were doing a lot of the big wrenching, so exhaust, engine mounts, getting stuff lined up, intake going on. Um, I was screwing around with some little plumbing jobs. I remember having to screw with some wiring, mounting the ignition coil, a bunch of little odd stuff. And then anytime Dave needed a tool, I was the guy finding a tool or making a tool. I have a bunch, we made a bunch of tools that day, a punch out of an old bolt and some other stuff. Just having to come up with stuff to get these jobs done and to get them done quickly because we felt like we were under some big kind of pressure and it was really just pressure on ourselves to get this done. And the thought had crossed my mind, hey, did anybody burp the coolant? Did anybody, I saw coolant go in, but generally you jack up the front of the car, you get the radiator to the highest point, and this radiator sits kind of funny. So it's like, you know, the thought had crossed my mind, we gotta burp the coolant. And before I could even make another thought to act on that, it was, hey, let's do this real quick, or I need to drill this hole, or something happened. And that went out the window. Next thing I know, car's getting pushed outside and we're trying to start it. Cool, all right, car's getting started. What are we doing next? And then, you know, car gets running. We run into problems with the distributor being 180 out. And, oh, now the spark plug wires are on backwards. And now there's an oil leak. <laughs> so there was a lot of distracting factors and five people running around all doing some, trying to make this thing go. And 
the, the pretty big detail got overlooked, and here we are three months later with that. Do we actually, do you think we actually have time to go cruise again? I do. Cruise where? Because I, uh, yes. Yeah, I really want shots in South Dakota. I think we should now that we've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. Since I mean, that was the goal. Finally make it to South Haven. Like, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. At, at least like even if we're out there for ten minutes. You know. The running joke for the day was, we're gonna lose the shop. Uh, we were basically doing a garage show, and that's a key point of like every garage show you see on TV, like the, the fake drama, like if we don't sell this car, we're gonna lose the shop. Yeah, the production company needs us down at Pixley's by three o'clock. I don't care. They're gonna shut the show down. I don't care. <laughs> We're gonna lose the shop. Yeah, we're gonna lose the shop if we're not at Pixley's by three. That was our running joke that we're gonna lose the shop if we don't drive this to South Haven for the day. And it started off as a joke. I almost blame we're gonna lose the shop for melting the engine. Because if I had taken more time and I hadn't just revved it trying to break in the camshaft, we would have gone slower, I might have shut it off again, hey, is it taking coolant, and we wouldn't have lost the car. So, in, a, in the end, we're gonna lose the shop, lost the engine. Let's get the bonnet back on and uh, put it on the truck. We'll fight another day. This is what we like to do. We just like to get in cars and help each other do fun stuff with them. And those, yeah, and when he suggested coming here to do this, I'm like, of course, I'm in, yeah, let's do it. And I was the one that was totally confident we would do it in a day. <laughs> 